Senator from New Jersey. I ask unanimous consent to enter into a colloquy with my colleague, the Senator from Alabama. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Our nation's youth are facing an unprecedented mental health crisis, and we need to take immediate action to address the root causes and ensure adequate access to care. I stand here today with my friend and colleague, Senator Katie Britt, to implore continued action to solve this crisis. This issue is one that is personal for me, as it is for Senator Britt. We both have young children, and so we see what they and their peers experience firsthand. There is no issue more urgent, more critical to our nation's future than the health and safety of our next generation. The challenges are well known, and frankly, the data is shocking. Over the past decade, cases of severe depression among young adults have nearly doubled. In the 2010s, suicidal behaviors among high school students increased by more than 40 percent. And since 2017, the number of youth hospitalized for anxiety has increased by 50 percent. The proportion hospitalized for self-harm has nearly doubled. I repeat, the proportion hospitalized for self-harm has nearly doubled. Youth and young adults aged 10 to 24 account for 15 percent of all suicides an increase of over 50% since just 2000. It's the second leading cause of death among our young people. We can point to numerous stressors feeding this crisis, and as I've discussed on this floor with great honor before, social media lands at the very top of that list. Social media has not altered, only altered the way that our young people interact, but the very way in which they see themselves, and even the way their brains develop. Senator Britt understands this issue and has been a leading voice in this chamber and throughout Congress. I turn to her and thank her for her leadership. Mr. Helmy, thank you so much for your leadership on this important issue from day one. Mr. President, you yourself have led on this issue significantly. I think it's important for our colleagues on both sides of the aisle to come together and understand just how pressing America's mental health crisis really is. I was honored when Senator Helmy came to me right after being sworn in and told me that he wanted to work together on mental health issues and social media. And that's what we're doing here today. And all of the statistics that Senator Helmy mentioned are not only horrifying, but really challenging to even wrap our head around. The word crisis doesn't even begin to capture what we're up against. And while we should always be wary of pointing to just one culprit, there is one that stands out amongst the rest, and that is social media. As a mom of two teenagers, I see firsthand and I hear from other moms about the effects of social media on our country's children. And at the same time, those incredibly distressing trends that Senator Helmy detailed took place. Social media usage became pervasive among America's kids. And the numbers back it up. So if you look, 54% of teenagers said it, was, it would be hard to give up social media. Half of all teens say that they're addicted to their phones. That was in a two, in 2016 survey. Can't imagine what it would say today. 35% say that they are almost constantly on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, or Facebook. And for those of you who can't see, we're getting some shaking heads from our pages down front. Almost all of Americans' teens have access to a smartphone. This near constant use of social media platforms has consequences. U.S. Surgeon General wrote this summer that three hours of social media is two times the risk of anxiety and depression amongst our young people. The average American teenager spends nearly five hours a day on social media, and it's clearly having an impact. The Department of Health and Human Services study shows almost half of adolescents say that social media makes them feel worse about their bodies. Internal research on Instagram conducted itself show that a third of teenage girls who use the app report that it, quote, made them feel worse, and they found themselves, quote, unable to stop. And results in studies like the CDC's Youth Risk Behavior Surveillance System and the National Institute on Drug Abuse Monitoring the Future Survey show teens and tweens today get less sleep, less exercise, and less in-person time with their peers than previous generations. It is long past time to do something about this crisis. And I'd like to hand it back to Senator Helmy to talk about how this body is getting to work. 
Thank you, my friend. The Senate, uh, as divided as it may seem, can and has acted decisively. We've all witnessed this with the Kids Online Safety Act, led by my friend and Senators Blumenthal, Blackburn, Markey, and Cassidy, which sailed through the Senate unanimously. The bill protects both youth currently impacted by social media, but also seeks to address the root causes of the danger, the addictive design of the algorithm. This decisive action shows me that this body can and will do big things together to protect our young people. This is proof that there is that hope, and I now turn back to my colleague, Senator Britt, for her leadership on yet another bipartisan bill that I hope will also pass through this chamber. Yes, and, and listen, I, I'm so glad that you brought up before we move to, to the next one. The Kids Online Safety and Privacy Act, I think, really represents the best among us. It was a true bipartisan uh, product. It showed progress on the issue. I am proud um, to have been a co-sponsor and working alongside the senators that you mentioned, their leadership, uh, Blackburn, Blumenthal, Cassidy, Markey, that were willing to step up and truly say, look, here is a path forward and let's build consensus and move it. And so um, thank you for the effort, um, all of them, that they put into this legislation. I wasn't surprised like you that it passed the Senate in overwhelming fashion because this is not a red or a blue issue. Y'all, this is an American issue, and that's exactly how this must be tackled. And it's clear that this body understands that, and I'm looking forward to continuing to build more momentum, taking more steps on a bipartisan basis to move that ball even further down the field. And Senator Helmy, you are uh, a parent, just like I am. We are raising kids in this environment. We are seeing how social media affects them, and it's really a struggle that I think unifies us in an unprecedented way. I was proud to work along with Senator Brian Schatz and Ted Cruz and Chris Murphy as we also reflected on this problem as parents. Um, that's why our bipartisan group introduced the Kids Off Social Media Act. It would prevent kids under 13 from creating a social media account, something that social media companies say they do anyway, so that shouldn't be a problem. It would prohibit the use of algorithms, as you mentioned, these algorithms, really getting to the heart of that. It would prohibit the use of algorithms on all social media users that are under the age of 17. And it would also require schools to block and filter social media on their Wi-Fi networks if they receive federal funding. I also worked alongside Senator Amy Klobuchar, and we introduced the Youth Mental Health Research Act. It would create a national youth mental health research initiative to guide long-term mental health care efforts and better target prevention intervention for those at risk of developing mental health challenges. So these are many bipartisan pieces of legislation that are here right now. Unfortunately, we are in a place in this world where the media believes so often that it is their job to sell the news instead of tell the news. And so, Senator Helmy, you putting this together today for us to tell the work that is being done in this chamber in a bipartisan way to address an issue I think is so critically important and we must keep talking about it. Look, I want to mention uh, one other piece of legislation that you are a co-sponsor of and I am so grateful, and that is my work with Senator John Fetterman. So following the Surgeon General's calling for a warning label on social media, Senator Fetterman and I put our heads together to create a bill that did that, and then a little bit more. Our bill, the Stop the Scroll Act, would require a warning label when people open up a social media platform, almost like a pop-up, that would also include links to mental health resources. We want to ensure that resources are at the fingertips of those who need it most. Quickly, after being sworn in, Senator Helmy joined our effort and our call to fulfill the Surgeon General's recommendation. I am thankful for Senator Helmy and joining Senator Fetterman's and my bill. His passion to help America's kids is truly inspiring. While he and I might not agree on every issue, at the end of the day, we both see the obvious, and that is that social media is harming our kids, and America faces a mental health crisis. Senator Helmy, do you mind speaking about why you felt like it was so important to join Senator Fetterman and my effort uh, with the Stop the Scroll piece of legislation? I, I will, Senator Brin, thank you. And I, I just want to say that um, I applaud your leadership, and, and while I appreciate you mentioning that uh, I wanted us to come together, I would just say make a, a point that all of the bills you have mentioned 
have one thing in common, not only the general thematic, but they are bipartisan. And I think what that says, and it's a tribute to your leadership, your thoughtfulness, and your doggedness on this issue, which is this chamber reflects and recognizes that there is a serious crisis and is willing to come to hold big tech accountable, but also make them a part of the solution and the resolution. And so I applaud your leadership. And so why stop the scroll? And I think this is also a tribute to the success of this chamber on the Kids Online Safety Act, is senators like Senator Britt and others were able to make the case for the issue and come up with real solutions that helped uh, Americans understand the problem and it passed through this chamber and I hope that it will pass through the other chamber. But like, like, um, like that bill, uh, Stop the Scroll seeks in a bipartisan way to address issues we've heard from our great mental health and medical professionals. Like the warning linking cigarettes to cancer and mortality, the Surgeon General issued truly an unprecedented warning last year confirming the serious risks to our youth from social media. In an effort to learn more, I reached out and spoke to him just last month and the data and the science that I was presented and that he explained are clear. There's an urgent need to act now and raise awareness on the issues of social media use. Just like we have warning labels on cigarettes, we must also have them on social media, and that's why I was so proud to join you and other colleagues and sponsors Stop the Scroll. While I'll leave the Senate in a few weeks at a time where partisan divisions may run high, when I go home, however, I will tell many doubters that despite what the partisanship is that they see on the news, there is indeed reason to be incredibly hopeful for our next generation and generations to come. This piece of bipartisan legislation is proof of that hope, as are the many other pieces of legislation that my friend Senator Britt discussed. We must hold on to it and continue fighting for a better future for all of our children. Senator Britt, I thank you again for your leadership here, and thank you for reaching out to me across the aisle even before I was appointed uh, on, on this important issue, and I turn it back to you. Well, Senator Helmy, if I may say, I think Scott, Stop the Scroll is a great example of a small bill that could make a tremendous impact. And I am grateful for your support of it. But overall, I hope what America sees today is that we have faith that we can do the right thing by America's kids. Here we are, two people, quite far apart on several issues, but are willing to come together to address this urgent problem. Senator Helmy, I'm grateful that you came to me as soon as you were sworn in uh, to say, hey, how can we work on this particular issue? You hit the ground running. I hope the people of New Jersey and America know that. This man got to work before day one. And when he gave his address to this chamber, his maiden speech, he said, I will tackle this issue. And that's exactly what you did. As a brand new senator, you immediately sprang into action seeking out partners on both sides of the aisle to address something that you knew was critically important, willing to bring different opinions, different perspective to the table in order to achieve a result. Senator Helmy, I am proud to have worked with you on this critical topic and so many other things during your tenure here in the United States Senate. It is truly an honor to have served with you and I hope the people, the great people of the state of New Jersey and the people of this nation understand the leadership that you've exhibited during your short tenure here and the impact you've made on colleagues like me who may sit across the aisle but are given hope by our ability to come to the table and move important things forward. It is an honor to serve, you, uh, serve with you um, and thank you for allowing me to be a part of this today and helping me tackle such a critical issue. Well, thank you so much for the kind words, my friend. I'm, I'm honored, frankly, to be by your side, two former staffers uniting on an important yes. issue here on the floor of the United States Senate. Uh, it's like the Avengers uniting. Um, yes. wor working with you on this issue has been a, a highlight of my time here uh, and foundational to the hope I feel being back in the institution. I'd be remiss if I didn't note the presence of a great leader of this institution, uh, a storied uh, senator from, from Texas who's in the chamber. In, in my 100-day uh, plan, I had vowed to sprint toward uh, progress towards youth mental health, which again is an issue that I had seen firsthand uh, with my own uh, experience. Uh, in addition, speaking to the Surgeon General, I know Katie and I both spoke to key government leaders, nonprofit organizations, and youth leaders who could truly tell us what they were experiencing as young people and, and the experiences of their friends, which are vastly different than the experience I may have had as a child growing up. And we work across the aisle um, to co-sponsor and lead legislation uh, with not only Senator Britt, but my mentor and senior senator and friend, Cory Booker and tremendous colleagues like Senators Casey, Butler, Klobuchar, Fetterman, Durbin, Butler, Wyden, and Coons, to name a few. And I, I go back home 
and I'm working with these nonprofits and young activists to learn the issue better and understand both on the front and the root cause the issues related to access to care when they do present with a problem. What I've seen is incredible. As a former staffer, I believe in this institution, I believe in the United States Senate, and I've always believed in this country, uh, especially now. But there's obviously more work to do. And as I stand on this floor asking for continued action, we need to pass Senator Britt and Senator Fetterman Stop the Scroll Act, and their counterparts in the House should pass the Kids Online Safety Act, which, as mentioned, passed unanimously through this story chamber. But finally, I note, just yesterday I introduced a new piece of legislation, the Youth Revenue Transparency Act, to hold big tech accountable. We know that technology companies are finding profit in this crisis. These companies can quantify how much their revenue is driven by minors, and they can certainly quantify how much marketing they are putting into targeting minors. And we know that transparency in big corporations is critical for efficient markets, as it is critical for accountability. And I believe both investors and parents have the rights to quantify this as well. They need to know how their investments and business decisions made by big tech are driving the youth mental health crisis. And that's why my bill, the Youth Revenue Transparency Act, I'm asking big tech to disclose data on the share of revenue driven by our kids and the amount they spend targeting our children with marketing. Why, you ask, introduce legislation with just a few weeks left in this Congress? Because as a former staffer, I believe in the role of this institution. I believe in the role of a senator, maybe the role of all Americans, to raise our voices for what is right, that one day these small acts will, I hope, rise to a crescendo of action and create meaningful and lasting change for this generation and the generation of Americans to come. We may start small, but we can do big things. We can hold these companies accountable for their actions and for their harm for the next generation. We can and we must. And I look forward in the coming years maybe not in this institution, but alongside the storied senators in this chamber. And I will work on this vital issue regardless of our politics, cheering you on and supporting these efforts. So as John F. Kennedy powerfully said, children are the world's most valuable resource, and it is our only and best hope for the future. Mr. President, I yield the floor.